Hello everyone, um, I'm Alvaro Aparicio, director of Retablo, a Peruvian film that will be playing in the generation section of Berlinale. We are very excited to be here and we invite you to go and see the film. Um, hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the 32nd Teddy Award. I'm Jean Bourbobac and I'm here to discuss the film Retablo by Avaro Dagao Aparicio. Very Welcome good. to the festival. <laughs> Thank you so uh, much. It's 68th Berlinale. This is your first time here. How do you feel about this? Very, very excited. Um, very honored to be yeah. here um, to have our film in Berlin, um, a Peruvian film. Uh, very, very happy. Yeah. So the film site is Retablo. We see a beautiful Retablo right here. Yes. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the culture of this altar that the people do in, in Peru and, and what's the significance of it? Yes, it's very interesting. Um, um, in Ayacucho, um, uh, a city outside Lima, yeah. uh, we find many, many Retablo makers and they are very interesting artisans and their focus is to represent uh, religious or folkloric festivities or, or real life events in these uh, masterpieces that they do, very colorful. Um, and one thing that uh, I always was amazed by, by the artisans is that they used to tell us we are like filmmakers. The difference is that we have the camera inside our heads and we normally observe life and when we think that there it is, that's what they're going to make with their own hands. Uh, so there are portraits of life that, that they create in these boxes. No? And paradoxically, there is no English translation for Retablo, but during the film we always try to think of, of a word and, and we always call it like story boxes because mm -hmm. The box will always, when you open it, um, it will portray a particular story of something. No? Yeah. And the other attribute which is quite interesting of this retablo box is normally you would observe it and it will tell you something. But if you can contemplate it for a little while, um, and the more you enter the box, the more details you will find, which is um, which, which is a metaphor that we have used in the film and has always, I've been drawn to that. You know? yeah. uh, the possibility of, of, of looking inside yeah. uh, places and how complicated that is yeah. or how difficult that is. Yeah. Um, that's why we were drawn so much yeah. with this beautiful Peruvian um, artifacts. Yeah. So that, that was your motivation basically? Behind well, one, one of the many motivations uh, to yeah. do that film, you mean? No, for like, using the retablo as Yes, a yes, of course. Within, yes. Within, within I mean, the, the, the artifact of that retablo brings yeah. you so, ma so much aesthetic, yeah. uh, so many dimensions, no? For me, a retablo is also like a, a portal. You, mm. can, you can go to be transported to some, some place else. Yeah. Um, uh, so in itself, it's, a, it's like a magical box that, um, that can transform things, and that was the the inspiration, yeah. we were thinking about the narrative of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how could we create a setting in which uh, our main character could be transported in yeah. different ways, especially um, when he's growing up yeah. as a teenager. Yeah. We will get 
back to this because this really comes back with the film techniques that you use within the film. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk first a bit about about the story itself that that the film tells. So, um, in the focus of the film, there is a son and a father relationship, mm -hmm. basically. Um, which gets very complicated after the son discovers the father's the secret. secret. Yeah. Um, it brings in queer issues uh, to the film and we see a very particular masculinity represented in this film. It's, it's a recurring theme of the film that all these male characters, especially the young male characters of the movie, they they have to be manly enough to do something, they have to choose a manly job, they, they have to behave in a manly way. So, so there is this very strong notion of masculinity in the yes. film. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that and if, if that's reflective of, of the masculinity that, that is present in, in the Peruvian culture? I mean, um, the first, I think the essence of the film is about um, a young boy, that's the main character, that um, idealizes his father, yeah. you know? And of course he wants to become like his father yeah. until something happens and he didn't... Uh, what, what he sees is not anymore what he imagined yeah. and he has a void, you know, has a big hole and he doesn't know how to deal with that. Um, so that that painfulness, uh, we always ask ourselves, like, can you reparate that? Can you um, deal with that? And then, in a different layer, if, if that is posed in a, in a very um, closed society, uh, where diversity is difficult, no? or the relationship between tradition and modernity is, 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 is not necessarily related, yeah. no? or, or, or cannot live together yeah, that they, much, clashing, no? yeah. uh, or clashes. Um, that was interesting, um, particularly in societies um, that we could see all over the world, yeah. um, where black is black and white is white, and to go different to the norm is very difficult to accept. Um, um, so, um, going back to the film, yes, um, the ways, uh, what, what means to be a man, uh, what does it mean to uh, the manhood, uh, and the portrayal of that is very, is very clear cut. And sometimes when, when you go out of that particular norm, you know, especially in a very religious context, it's very difficult to tolerate. You know? yeah. Um, that was a dimension of the film that we thought um, was very interesting to bring and to treat it with all the respect that it, that, that, that it needs. But it's something that is very difficult as, a, as an observer uh, that people have to deal with and it's not that easy, no? Yeah, yeah absolutely. For, for this masculinity that is present in the film, it's also strongly linked with, with violence and to a certain extent with the objectification of women as well. Um, and it was interesting to see in this light how this main character, this young boy, sort of seems to stand above this kind of masculinity. He, he is still, up until the secret of the father comes to light for the whole community, mm. up until then he is an accepted figure within that community, but he is still different than the other boys in, in a way. Yes. Was this a deliberate decision to, to portray him like that? I mean, well, well, when we were constructing the, the characters, um, we always um, imagine uh, a main protagonist of, of Segundo, the boy, yeah. to be a very sensitive person, yeah. you know, and especially um, you need to be very sensitive to enter into the art world, at least, and, 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 to, and to be obsessed and, and admiring this, this, this craft, you know? And additionally to that, it was very interesting to, to construct the character in a way um, he will see life 
within the eyes of the father rather than yeah. within his own eyes. Yeah. Um, and especially when you grow up and when you are uh, an adolescent, you know, a teenager, you started to search your identity um, in many layers. And in this layer, uh, it's, it's about separating from, from your father mm -hmm. to become your own identity. Yeah. Um, and it was very interesting to conflict that, not only because of, of what's happening with the character of the father, but also with, with the context yeah. in which um, that particular society in this story um, <laughs> believed and viewed and, and felt. You know? yeah. um, but yes, um, but on the other hand, um, I really liked the, the character of the mother as well, because in the Andes, is a very strong woman, you know? Yeah. The, the character played by, by, by Magali, which is Anatolia, is a, is a very strong woman um, that sh she has a, a disability yeah. and has a point of view, has a voice, Absolutely. you know? He's the one that, um, that actually supports uh, the family for them to do what they are, you know? Um, and it's very uncommon to see uh, yeah. in the story uh, this type of woman, no? Yeah. But now, if, if you think about it, you go to the Andes and, and we have very strong women, no? Very strong vo women Certainly. with strong voices um, and that do amazing things. Yeah. Um, but sometimes because of um, how, how the paradigms of society work, um, their voices are shut, yeah. you know? But if you give them the platform or the opportunity, they will bring so many things to the table. No? Yeah. And that's what I respected so much about the, the character of, of Anatolia. Yeah, no, definitely. The, the mother's character was, was a really beautiful portrayal of, of female agency and, 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 and the power of femininity as well. But I also found it interesting that maybe because, because of this, sort of switch that that she was there to provide for the family so they could like father and son could devote their time and talent to the art that they are mm -hmm. that they are doing it was a very different relationship between the mother and the son and between the father and the son as well which is which was also kind of a reverse thing usually mothers are the one who are like really taking care of, 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 of the children spending a lot of time with them and, and, and all, all these kind of things. And in that light, it was still interesting that that Segundo turned out to be this very independent little man towards the, the end yeah. of the film. And, and he represented a very different way of manhood than what we see in his surrounding. Yes. So can you, can you explain yes, a bit um, the mother-son relationship here? I mean, it's really interesting what you point out because um, uh, another layer of a film that we thought it was quite interesting for these particular characters was that um, they believed that they were not peasants, they were artisans. So um, being an artisan, um, and because they are a really good artisan, um, they have a, a particular reputation and credibility in, in their own society. You know? And that perhaps was the way of, of uh, of, of living and, and evolving in time, you know, and giving an opportunity for, for the boy to, 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 to evolve and to develop, you know, yeah. and will not be in the streets or will not be um, lost, you know. So when we constructed the character of the mother, um, she knew about this, you know. Yeah. So in that sense, is the, it's really interesting how to see family dynamics and observe um, uh, in, in a subtext way, um, the rules of, of yeah. what do they want to play and why do they do things, no? Um, which is very different from the traditional way of family life, no? And that I think is really important because um, uh, modernity is changing, modernity is bringing so many opportunities for diversity and, 
and to stratify families of people in certain ways, I think, um, uh, miss so many opportunities, so many voices, so many platforms to, to people to evolve, no? So we wanted uh, this family to have, to be different from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and of course, in the story that has a cost, and that has its own dynamics and complexities, and uh, we play that out, no? Yes. But, um, uh, from the start, we we saw them a, as a as a as a different portrayal of family life, you know, yeah. um, that have their own um, complicity. Yeah. Um, they are authentic because they are true to the art. You know, it's not that something that is imposed. Um, segundo is is growing up as a as a as a boy that really likes the art. It's not that okay, you have to do it, you know. Yeah. And, 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 of course, uh, through, through heritage, you now have to assume a role, a role that perhaps you never question whether you want it or not, but it's, it's inoculated since you're very young. Um, and when the whole thing collapses in the story, uh, there's so many questions, uh, not only the identity of, 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 of Segundo, but there's so many questions about what should he do, what's good, what's bad, um, why things behave in a certain way, why societies are like this. Um. So like we see Secundo as a character who, who really like grows up in this, in, the, in this difficult situation, but there is obviously this conflict um, of, of, uh, re of recognizing the secret of the father and also like through that basically the whole world that he believed in before and that he existed in before it just falls apart for, for him and he has to find answers and he has to step forward deal from with that. there. <laughs> deal with that. Yeah, deal with that. Mm. So, so can you tell us a bit more about, about this quest for, yes, for um, identity and, and, and new that's, life? That's a very interesting question. Um, normally in that case of, of, of Segundo, he's... Um, Super interesting character that yeah. that admires his father so much uh, and wants to be like him, wants to become like him, you no? Know? And suddenly um, this secret appears, and everything that he imagined is not, yeah. or everything that he believed is not there anymore. So, regardless yet of the theme, there is a void. There is a void that you cannot. Um, handle it. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with that? Um, in a traditional context, um, you cannot just talk to anybody about it. Uh, um, so you have to deal it internally. And that's even more complex. You know? yeah. um, that we were really interested to, to portray and also to, to see where where his own resources yeah. will play out as, yeah. a, as a human being yeah. and how would that um, end up, you know? Because um, one of the, another question we had is if the relationship with somebody that you, that you like so much is about love would, love, would that love could disappear or should be stored somewhere, you know? Yeah. And when you enter in these type of relationships, um, especially with our own characters, um, uh, an interesting question that we were always were asking ourselves in every single scene is that sometimes you, you can admire somebody and you can be in a very um, intense relationship and suddenly, for some reason, uh, if it's your partner, your father, your sister, whoever, you want to go out, you want to become free, but dependence is stronger. And you stay, you know, and yeah. you want to go out, but you uh, you yeah. stay, and yeah. and that complexity um, that is very from every human being. Um, we we thought it was really interesting in, yeah. in the story of Retablo. Yeah, at the end, at least in my interpretation, Segundo seems to find the way to deal with this conflict like comes up with that uh, and and it's and it's uh, it just uh, we, we leave him at a place that is like kind of a 
a positive or like a hopeful place uh, for him. Do you think that that Secundo, by dealing with all these complex issues and being able to overcome them, could be a model, like a role model for for youth in in, mm. in Latin America, or maybe even for for queer youth in a way? I think that's a very very interesting question. Um, because it's a lot to deal with for, a, yes. for such a young I mean, I think boy. rather than... Because I, everybody in different ages, and especially when, when you're growing up, everybody deals with, with a yeah. lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Um, uh, can you say shit here? Or no, no totally. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of shit. And, um, but it depends how you, you design your journey yeah. or you, you play that journey out. Yeah. You know? um, what I yeah. like from his character is that... Um, what what Keith tries to find is to have a point of view. Yeah. Um, right. You start the film um, doing retardo from the point of view of your father. Yeah. And although his father is training him and for him to have a different point of view yeah. and to do the thing, he can't for some reason. Yeah. And and through all this complication that he goes. Uh, at the end, he finds his point of view. Yeah. That's why he does a different retablo at yeah. the end. No? Exactly, and it comes back in the film techniques as well. Of course, yes, and yeah. his own colors and his yeah. own way of doing it. And I think that is life. Yeah. I think uh, everybody has to have a point of view yeah. and shouldn't be afraid of Which trying is. it, experimenting it, and doing it, you know? Yeah. Uh, because it's there, and, and some people take more time yeah. to find their point of view. Yeah. Um, but nobody, Certainly. nobody should be um, um, scared about it. Mm. Nobody should be uh, um, silenced, silenced about, about it, you yeah. know? It, I think that's the, the worst thing that yeah. could happen. And that's a universal theme. It's yeah. not a Peruvian theme, it's yeah. a universal theme. It's, it's a and, strong message for sure. And I think if we could choose one thing is that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, Alvaro, thank you so much. Um, I think that, yeah, this movie is certainly one with, with a very strong message, especially for a younger generation to take away with them. Uh, and I hope that it will be a very empowering experience for, for many. I felt like that it was. And congratulations on that. And I wish you a really good time at the Berlin Alley. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for, for the opportunity. And we are really proud to bring to the Berlin Alley this Peruvian film. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. <laughs>